Hi, my name is Dario Resendez, Product Manager here at ICANN for Monitors, and welcome to this edition of ICANN's Tech Corner. Today, we're going to talk to you about uh, the new AX20 from ICANN. The AX20 is the first monitor in our Atlas line of monitors. So basically what our Atlas line is going to be, it's going to, it's going to consist of our large format studio or field monitors. So if you see any of our bigger monitors, they will be called Atlas. So this is the first one. We're really excited about this one because it has a lot of cool features. Uh, the AX20 was designed primarily for field use. It could still be used in a studio, but a lot of the cool features, a lot of the things that make this monitor special were how we designed it for field use, how, to, how we designed it to make it easy to use in the field for professionals out there to make their jobs a lot easier. So I'm gonna go over that today. So what I'm gonna start off with is the physical aspects of the monitor because that's a very important part of what makes this monitor special. So as you can see here, this is the AX20. This is the back of it. Right away, you're gonna notice how slim the monitor is. It's made out of 100% uh, machined aluminum, so it's really strong. And we've also incorporated some shock absorption inside the chassis. So if the monitor does fall or anything like that, the internals are more protected. So you won't get uh, uh, as much damage. Now, you're gonna turn it around here real quick, and I'm gonna show you some of the cool things on the back of the monitor. So what we did with this monitor is we tried to fill it with as many cool features as we could, as many options and custom, customizable things that you can do to this monitor to make things easier and go quicker when you're out in the field. So number one is we've included five vase amounts on this monitor. So basically one right now is being used by the kickstand that comes included with the monitor. And I've got two more up here and then I've got two more here. So basically I got two vase amounts on the top, two vase amounts, three vase amounts in the middle. One of them is always going to pretty much be used by this kickstand. And we also have an accessory that allows you to mount this to a C-stand. So we have a vase amount, adjustable vase amount, that allows you to mount this to a C-stand, which is being used on this monitor over here. So you've got a lot, of, uh, a lot of flexibility on how you mount this monitor. Okay. So in addition, we also added two spots where you can mount uh, pro batteries to. So we've added uh, the whole patterns for Anton Bauer, V-mount, and IDX style battery plates. So whatever battery plates you use, or whatever battery system you're using, this monitor can be used with that battery power because it's, it's got the whole patterns. You can just mount the battery plate directly on here and power this baby. So speaking of power though, whenever you power this monitor, whether it's with the AC adapter that comes included or a battery, it has power outputs. So it can distribute power as well. So you can power any accessories that you have near your monitor or anything you have mounted to it, like a wireless uh, video transmitter or receiver, or some signal converters or anything, they, as long as they're you know, up to 12 volts, you can power it with this monitor. So I'm gonna turn it over here to the side and you can see that it has a mini XLR connector as well as a coax type power connector. The coax one's five volts, but the mini XLR is 12 volts. So you can power two things there. If I turn it around to the other side, you're gonna see that I have a D-tap as well. So I can power anything with a DTAP cable that I really, that I really want, as long as it, you know, it's 12 volts, 14 volts, this monitor can power your devices. It's also got a little USB there for uh, the uh, uh, probe calibrator that I'm gonna talk about a, a little later. Um, another cool feature for this monitor is that we've kind of jammed it full of quarter 20s to give you as many options on how to mount things to it. It's got three quarter 20s on top, three quarter 20 mounts on the sides, and also three quarter 20 mounts at the bottom and as well as three more quarter 20 mounts right here. So anything that you need to mount that has a quarter 20 screw on it, you can attach it to this monitor. Very, very versatile. Um, it's got this little cool handle here so you can carry it around easily. But also because of this kickstand is retractable. So whenever you're traveling with it, whenever you want to put it away, it gets pretty small and thin. It could fit anywhere really in any you know Pelican SKB type case, you can throw this in there and uh, it'll survive the day-to-day -day, uh, rigor of working in production. So all you gotta do is release this lever, the stand comes down, you adjust it where you want, let it go, and it's good to go. Okay, 
So basically these are most of the physical aspects of the AX20. What I'm gonna go over now is just turn it over a little bit and show you some of the inputs and outputs that this monitor has. So as you can see here, it has uh, two SDI inputs and one SDI output. It has RCA inputs as well, and it has HDMI, two HDMI inputs and one HDMI output. One of those HDMI inputs supports 4K though, so this monitor also supports 4K via the HDMI. The uh, 3G SDI goes up to 1080p60, but you can feed this monitor 4K via the HDMI. It also has two power inputs. It has a mini XLR and a full-size XLR power input, so whatever kind of DTAP cable you have, you can use it on this monitor, as well as XLR audio inputs as well. So you can feed this monitor uh, audio as well. Um, another feature of this monitor, since I'm showing you the back, is it's got four function buttons here on the side. These function buttons are touch sensitive. So when we were designing this monitor, we wanted to keep it very slim and minimalistic to make it easier to handle. So we had to put the buttons on the back. So in order to make it easier for you to see what you're pressing, these, these buttons are, are touch sensitive. So whenever you hover your finger over it, the screen will light up with whatever feature is mapped to these function buttons. So you can map any of these features, any of the features in this monitor to any of these four buttons. And then whenever you hover your, your finger over it, it lights up on screen to tell you what feature it is. And then if that's the one you want, you press it and there you go. So it's a really neat feature. Also has a little scroll wheel here to help you navigate the menu uh, really quick and efficiently. With this monitor and with a lot of our ICANN monitors, getting to the menu, getting to the features is always very quick and very fast. So these are the physical aspects of the AX20. It's a very beautiful monitor, very well designed as you can see here. So what I'm going to talk about now is a little bit of the other cool features this monitor has. So we put a lot of advanced features into this monitor. It supports all the basic standard features that all the other ICANN monitors support, like false color, peaking, all that stuff. But we also added some new features to this monitor. So we have waveform, vector scope, RGB parade, um, CIE scope, uh, audio levels, histogram, all that stuff in this monitor as well. So you can see it, and it's actually a very, very good, very good uh, waveform. So right now I have it mapped to function one, so I'm gonna press function one and enable the waveform. So you can see here right now it's full screen waveform. And as you can tell, it's a very, very high resolution uh, waveform. It's uh, very responsive. It's in real time, as you can see there. You see the image in the corner and you have the waveform. Well, what's also cool is that this monitor gives you a lot of options on how to customize how the waveforms appear on the screen. So it says to hold the, the function button three seconds to, to go into the options. So I'm gonna do that. And now I get some options here for the waveform. So right now it says waveform full screen. So if I go there and I say, hey, I want to change that, I can do the four screen one. So you can see waveform, vector scope, and RGB parade at the same time. And all types, which shows you all the kind of uh, measuring and scopes functions this monitor has. So the audio levels up here, the RGB parade, the RGB histogram, the waveform, vector scope, all that stuff. You can see it all at one time. Another cool feature is the CIE scope, as you can see there, allows you to, allows you to see where you land on, uh, on that, the color space of the video. So you can see there the, 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 the white spot part move in, showing you where this video lands on the, the horseshoe there. Um, and then in, under user mode, you can actually customize exactly where the, uh, what, uh, what scopes you're looking at and what position they are on screen. And then the blending allows you to, to, sh to tell the monitor how transparent you want those scopes to be. So a really cool feature though as well that I'm going to do here is it has the SDI waveform, waveform, waveform mode. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the, the waveform here and I'm going to go to SDI waveform mode. <laughs> and right now it's on screen. So as you can see, it's, you see it right, right there on the screen. But a really cool feature is, is that if I change it to output, so what that's gonna do is it's gonna turn off the waveform on the main monitor here, and right now it's outputting it via SDI. So what I did is I mounted one of my uh, other ICANN monitors here to the back of the AX20, which I'm gonna show you right now, mounted to one of the many quarter 20 mounts on the back of this monitor. So right now, as you can see there, you see the waveform. So the waveform of this footage is being outputted to a secondary monitor via SDI. So you can output it 
to a, a small monitor, a big monitor, whatever you need, as long as it's SDI. And that actually opens up, clears up your screen here so you can see the footage and get full screen scopes somewhere else, which is a really cool feature. And I also get more options for that as well. So I can get full screen or four screen. So then you can see here, it's gonna show me all four scopes at the same time. The waveform vector scope and RGB parade and uh, the histogram there as well. So that is also, that's a really neat feature. So the waveforms, the scopes in this monitor are very powerful. They give you a lot of options, a lot of custom, customization to get it just how you want it. They're very accurate, they're very fast, and they're very responsive. So that's one of the cool, neat, unique features to this monitor. Uh, something else that this monitor has as well is 3D LED capabilities. So I'll go through the menu right now and show you. So I'll exit out of the waveform. So I exited out of the waveform feature, so now it's just a loop out. So now it's just standard SDI loop out of the footage that's coming in. So I'm going to go to the menu and show you the LUT config uh, section. And right now I have a USB connected to this monitor that's loaded with LUTs. So what I can do, there's several ways I can do this. I can either access the stored um, LUTs on the USB stick or I can go and save those LUTs, especially like the ones that you use the most, the ones that I want to use the most, and store them on the monitor so I don't have to have that USB stick installed. So right now, if I go to USB looks, it, what it's going to do is going to allow me to browse the file system on the USB stick. So I'm going to go in there, and I have a folder called 3D LUT pack on the USB drive. And then these are the folders with the different LUTs that I have. So I can go into any one of these folders and enable any of the LUTs, and you can see a before and after on the screen as well. So say, for instance, here, I go to my custom LUT, I press it, and you're going to see that it's going to load up on the screen. There we go. And then you're going to see a before and after as well. So you're going to see the flat footage, and then you're going to see the footage with, with, the, uh, with the LUT applied. So basically if I want to save, and you see the little save icon there, so that means that one got stored onto the monitor. So if I want to save any of these on the monitor, I just double click it. And not only will it load it, but it will also save it on, uh, on the memory of the monitor. So that way I can quickly access it later if I want to. So what I'm doing now is going to exit out of this, out of this menu here. So there's the, the footage with the LUT applied. So I'll go back into the menu system and say, hey, well, you know what? I loaded it up, it's saved in the monitor, let me go look at some of my other LUTs. So I'll go to the store from the USB option, and these are the ones that I have stored on my monitor right now. So I'm gonna go back to the My Custom LUT and load that one back up. So this, this uh, monitor basically takes any, takes any of your cube files and uh, it'll be able to read them and load them up on the footage right away. So that's the 3D LUT capabilities of this monitor. Um, the other really cool feature is that it supports automatic color calibration. So if you have an X-Rite iDisplay probe, it's compatible with this monitor. You can go buy one or you can just go buy one online or wherever you want, plug it up to the USB here on the back of the monitor and enable that feature and the monitor goes through a self-calibration process. So that way you can always make sure that you have the, the, the proper colors. But what's also cool is that this works with any iDisplay probe. You don't have to buy iCAN's version of it like other companies do or a rebranded version of it, you can just go buy your X-Rite iDisplay probe. And if you already have one, which a lot of professionals do, it'll plug up right into this monitor to help you get that accurate color all the time. Another feature that it has is the GPI setup. So you can actually program this monitor with GPI functions and access them via network. So it gives you remote control of, of the functions of the monitor. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the menu real quick just to give you a quick uh, rundown of all the features that are available on this uh, monitor. So I'll go in there, go to the function setup, and this is where you set the functions that are going to be mapped to those function buttons I showed you earlier. So right now function one is waveform. So you have waveform, you have zooming, which allows you to zoom into the, into the image, uh, audio meters, turn them off and on, time code, this monitor can display time code, dual link SDI, Pixel measure, which allows you to get detailed color information of individual pixels. HDR preview, which I'm going to go into detail a little bit uh, later. Uh, check field. HV delay. Guides. Crosshair. Grids. 
peaking, false color, zebra, underscan, and back to waveform. So all these, all these functions, a lot of these functions also allow you to go into options and customize things like the color of peaking and things like that. So what I'm going to do now is set one of these to HDR preview so I can show you that real quick. So it's set to function one like uh, waveform was. Now I press the function one button. So what that does is it gives me the flat image there and I hold the button down and now I got HDR preview on. I can select the range so I can tell the monitor how bright this footage is. And then I can also select the uh, log format here. So right now it's in Sony log three. And then I can also go in there and select the different gamma. So Sony gamma three, gamma, uh, Cine. So it's all preloaded onto the monitor. So I know this was a Sony uh, footage, so I'll just leave it there. Um, so there you go. So with this monitor, it's, it's, it's got uh, HDR preview in it. So you can get a good idea during production on how your HDR footage is going to look when it's on a proper HDR monitor. So what I do there is just turn it off and exit. And then since the footage is kind of flat, I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the log, uh, the 3D LUT back up. And as you can see there, there it goes. So there you go. Those were a listing of all the features, the software features that this monitor has available, as well as it's able to be uh, updated via USB. So if any new features come up later, you can update this monitor. So overall, all in all, this monitor is a really cool monitor, has a lot of cool features, um, very beautifully designed, very easy to take, move around, very durable. Um, Overall, it's, I think, a very nice addition to the ICANN lineup, especially for being the first Atlas monitor. So, yeah, this has been the Atlas AX20. Thank you for watching. If you need any more information on this monitor or any other of our products, please visit www.icancorp.com. My name is Daryl Resendez. This has been ICANN's Tech Corner.